All right, what I'm going to do is put a new idea, or, well, I've, I've had it on my channel for a little while, but this is basically pragmatic explanations, okay? This is a um, lateral thinking, okay? This is lateral thinking here. What I'm doing is putting out a perspective and some ideas that nobody's really considered before. And it's the only thing that really makes sense. Now, when it comes to religion and God, okay, you got people saying, yes, there is, and no, there isn't, okay? What if I said both of them are correct, but both of them have the wrong things right and the wrong things wrong? But there are bits and pieces of, yes, there is, and no, there isn't. Yes and no that there's a creator. Obviously, something created the universe, all right? Obviously, something. And... History lets us believe that it was God, okay? Now, God is a word, basically. And a word is a nomenclature. Now, it's nothing like what people put it as. People put it down as some kind of benevolence, but it's not. What it is, is nature. Obviously, it's nature. Now, our science, our history, everything can prove what created the universe? But nobody ever thinks about it and puts it together because there's too many people fighting. Okay? Now, check this out. Alright, now, an acronym. What's an acronym? Well, the word acro comes from the term highest. Onim is a name. Alright? Now, God would be the highest, and it would be a name of the highest. Okay? Now, what's an acronym? Well, it's through this in this in this case, God is generation, operation, destruction. Okay, that's basically creation, order, and chaos. Now, when I think when I think of God, I don't see what most people see. This is what most people see. Even atheists that say they don't believe in God see this: a floating man as God. Oh wait, hold on. Let me put the beard on there. Gotta have a beard. Okay, this is what people see it. Okay, this is what I see God as. This is what I see God as, okay? Because this is technically what God is. Now, if you have Alpha and Omega, that is nuclear and electric energy. And the reason I think that is because that is actually what I know as a fact that nuclear energy is alpha decay. Okay? And Ohm's Law is electron current. Because we use Ohm's law for the resistance for electrons. Okay? So that's how we get our energy. So you have the beginning and the end. Okay? The beginning, that's the hot post. The end would be the ground. Now this, now that, just that term I just said is just a theory. But this is a fact. And beginning and the end, obviously, would be the universe. Now, theism is a belief that God created everything, right? Atheism is a belief that God didn't create everything, okay? An atheist has it believing that nothing created the universe, like this right here. Before the Big Bang, there was nothing. Not even empty space. Not even empty space, which is impossible. I'll poke three holes in this real quick. For one, this area has to exist or the singularity can't exist. Two, if they say it's really, really tiny... Well, relative to what is that tiny? Relative to what? Well, relative to this page, that dot is tiny. So in space, if the singularity was really tiny, what was it relative to? Infinite space. So there's two indications right there that they're lying about space. Three, you can't erase or make space out of anything. Now, how can I erase empty space? You can't. The only way to erase empty space is by filling it up with matter. The Big Bang has us adding matter. To create empty space. You can't do that. That's the exact opposite of what you do to, add, to make empty space. So that's a lie. Okay? So obviously, if Alpha and Omega is God, that's energy. If it's energy, that means before the singularity, that energy had to exist here. And that energy is what created the singularity. Okay? I mean, it's obvious. This is quantum physics that they don't let us know. All you have to know is the fact that space was there. Then you use the laws of thermodynamics. Boom. The end. It's that simple. That's why it's still the theory 
the Big Bang theory. I've seen people say, oh, why don't they just go ahead and say the Big Bang is the way the universe created? I mean, I mean, that's, why do they keep calling it a theory? Because of this. Because you can poke holes in it very easily. All right? Because I bothered to try. Because I'm not satisfied with what science teaches us and the arguing and fighting. Now, what's a placeholder word? A placeholder word is something you use to describe something. That's a nomenclature. A nomenclature is a word used to describe something. So God would be a nomenclature for nature, basically. What's the supreme being? Nobody believes the supreme being exists? Well, the being means existence. So they don't believe in the supreme existence? The supreme existence is space, time, and matter together. That's a supreme existence. That is a universe. Now, if this male, nuclear, and female electric energy are here before the singularity and they come together, that is literally conception. It might be pure energy, but it's still conception, believe it or not. The, the singularity, that means, was the first quantum cell in the universe. Why? Well, for one, this is going to do everything that a cell does. It's going to get energy and exchange energy with its surroundings of space because of the accretion. Okay? Essentially, humans are actually cells. We're Earth cells because Earth is technically alive. It's a living planet. What are we? We are cells, literally. What do we do? We get energy from our surroundings. We breathe oxygen. We eat. We drink. We are literally cells. If you hear Terrence McKenna talk about it, he says everything except for the scientific aspect that people aren't seeing. All right? Theos. Okay? The word God means theos. Theos. To look at, to see, to observe. That's what it means. That's the universe. Pantheists are closest than any religion in the really on knowing what the truth is. Pantheists are the closest. Because obviously something created the universe. That's energy. Okay? Obviously something created the universe. It didn't come from just nothing. There is nothing here. But that nothing is still something. That means it's a zero and a one. Okay? That means that it's neutral. Alright? Neutrons decay. Decay into protons and electrons. Now, nobody's ever, ever put any of this together. Ever. Other than myself, apparently. Alright? Now, if you have space, which is a 1 and 0, that means it's neutral. Neutrons decay within 6 minutes in free space. They decay into an electron and a proton. Because it remains neutral. A proton is 1. An electron is negative 1. That means both of the, it will decay into basically a zero and a one. Okay? You know why? Because space is neutral. It's a neutral ground. Okay? It's a flat plane of existence. Okay? Now, obviously, time can't exist unless you have matter. Now, physicists will say that if you have space, then you have to have time in there. Okay? Well, if you have a universe where there's matter, of course. Okay? Because space, relative to matter, together, both of them together, equal time as a byproduct. Alright? Okay? This is a fact that's unrecognized in physics. Because you cannot have time unless you have something to measure. And that's matter. Okay? Matter and time are symbiotic, not space and time. Because you can remove matter from space. That means they are separate. They can be separated. All right, now say you have all this floating around ghostly energy, okay? This would be considered what is the Holy Ghost. You know why? Because technically, what's holy? Well, space is holy because it's just a big old hole. It's holy, all right? And it's this is ghostly energy, okay? So that, okay, so now you have... Nuclear, say, say this is a proton and a neutron, and this is an electron, okay? This electron can't go into orbit, all right? Because you can't just take an electron and say, hey, I want to orbit. It has to go through a process to create an atom, all right? So what's it do? All this energy coalesce into a singularity. And when it does this, all of these electrons are rubbing this, this nucleus, basically creating a lot of static. Now, imagine taking a balloon and rub it in your hair, okay? You rub it around your hair a whole lot, then you put some paper over it, 
and the paper will sit and hover. Okay? What you're doing is you're giving that energy. All right? So what these electrons are doing in this singularity is gaining this energy. I mean, these nuclei are literally getting energy, static energy. It's like they're getting static energy. These electrons are rubbing these nuclei all in this singularity. Okay? All of it. And it's, complete, it's completely and literally creating atoms, electron orbits. All right? So now, once this goes into a big bang, which relative to space is only just basically a cosmic fart, but to us, on our little bitty scale, this right here would be boom, I mean a big ass explosion. All right? So now, once this does this, you can have simple atoms. Okay? Atomic hydrogen. So now, you have atomic hydrogen. And all these population three stars. Pure hydrogen stars. And then you have, obviously, stellar evolution. All right? But if you want to get technical... Okay, this is what's going on. If you hide the facts from people, that will leave a question. And that question is, is there a God? Now, we can figure this stuff out. And we have the, ex the explanation. We have the science. Okay? So say this is the government. All right? He hides the fact that there's a, a God or not a God. Okay? He just hides the science. Okay? That can give us an answer like I just did. Okay? That proves technically there is and isn't a God. That both are right. Okay? Now, just because you're an atheist and you can't give somebody credit for being right, you know, that's your own problem. If you're a Christian, you can't give somebody credit for being right because you want to believe in, in, in your fantasy shit. That's your problem, all right? If you can't believe in something that's universal, then you don't want peace. I do, all right? Because I got children, and I care about what happens to my kids in this world because it's getting terrible, and it doesn't have to be that way. All right, so you have two people here fighting. These guys are fighting, all right? Now, similarly, here's a sidewalk, all right? Now, it's either concrete or cement. All right, this guy's cussing at this guy, calling it concrete. This guy's cussing at this guy, calling it cement, okay? Both of these guys are fighting over what to call this, okay? Say one's an atheist and one's a Christian. They're both fighting over God, all right? Obviously, something created us. What you call it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. Who fucking cares what you call it? Fact is, it exists, okay? So this guy's suppressing the ideas to keep these guys fighting while he's sitting there pickpocketing them. Snatching their money. Passing stupid laws. Doing all kinds of shit behind these guys' back because he's suppressing the science that explains what this sidewalk is. See what I'm saying? Now, you don't have to believe me at all. You don't have to listen. Okay? I'm just trying to give you some facts. Alright? You can't debunk any of this because it's based on facts. Alright? There's no literal theory in this, really. It's all literal facts. And that's the problem. There are facts here, a whole bunch of them, that literally corroborate both sides that there is and isn't. Technically, all it is is a perspective, all right? This is what created the universe, right? Well, whether you call it a singularity or God or whatever, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all. fact is, the damn thing existed and it created the universe, all right? Acronym does come from the highest, and this is a name, all right? The only thing that would be a theory, technically, would be the generation, operation, and destruction aspect. All right? And that's actually, that actually holds a lot of water if you look it up. Okay? And when you consider the creation of nature, or nature's process of the universe, this only makes perfect sense. Because it's creation, order, and chaos. Or space, nuclear, and electric. Generation, Operation Destruction. They're all three the same exact thing. And the funny thing is, is all three of them coincide perfectly into a philosophical equation. And this is what I say. I'm religious and atheistic. That means I'm realistic. Because obviously, both of them are going to be true. They're going to have some truth behind them, both. They're not being a God and they're being a God. All right? Because obviously we're created by something. But obviously a floating man in the sky doesn't exist either. So I'm literally on both people's side. I'm actually atheistic and religious. Because I'm 
realistic. Because I know what religions are. They're science. They're ancient science. They have completely lost their truth. Now, what does our science do? It tries to tell us what created everything. Well, obviously, that's what science, uh, religions are doing. They're doing the exact same thing. And the funny thing is, is they have a lot of the same numbers. And numbers don't lie. All right? Any physicist will tell you this. And when they all have the and when all these religions have the same numbers as the Bible, then they're all talking about something. And when all those numbers coincide with astrophysics, that means that they're all talking about astrophysics. So it, it completely I mean it's obvious what's going on, but people are fighting for whatever reason because they're not happy. And if you have a government that's fucking the people over and they're not happy, then you're going to get a lot of fighting. And what are they going to be doing? Paying attention to each other instead of the person that's fucking them over. And that's the exact situation we have. All this stuff is to distract us. Now, a blind hate, technically a blind hate is using the word God in a sentence. Like say I said uh, God is the universe. Okay? A person with blind hate would say, Oh, that's stupid. There ain't no such thing. And blah, 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 blah. Because they only hate the word God. Okay? They're not listening to the fact that I just said that if God is the universe, that means there is no God. Because the universe is what created everything. Okay? They don't see that. They have a blind hate for a simple three-letter fucking word. And that's it. That's all it is. Now, they will say, and this is atheistic people now, they'll say, that's not what God is. God is, is, a, is a fantasy and all blah, blah, blah. And then they'll put their own definition behind it. When basically they are doing the exact same thing the Christians do that they complain about. Saying that God is this and that and yada, 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 what God is. When it's not. It's nature. It's a natural process. Okay? So they'll say, oh, God is a floating man and blah, 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 all this shit. And you're sitting there trying to tell them, dude, there is no God. What the fuck are you talking about? You just you're, there's, you don't believe in God, but you're sitting there telling me that's what God is? I mean, come on. How can you not believe in God but believe that's what it is? It doesn't make any sense. And religious people can't stand it because they think it's more. They want to believe it's more. But oblivion is the true creator. You know why? Because oblivion is infinite, fathomless space. Man, this is oblivion. Imagine this just goes on forever, and it's dark space. Okay? Dark space. Inside this, you have nuclear and electric energy. You have a proton, neutron, electrons. That's all you have. Okay? Because in space, only energy exists. And it wants to exist in a low energy state, which is matter. Because matter, believe it or not, is nuclear and electric energy. Obviously. So, this is an atom. Ironically, Adam and Eve. You know, Adam. What's an Eve? An Eve is like a, a awning, a shadow. Technically, this would be considered the Eve because it oversees the nuclear energy. Technically. And, oh, that's another thing. So, a lot of people want to say that Adam and Eve didn't exist, okay? First of all, you have a population of 7 billion humans on the planet. Obviously, the first ones had to exist or you wouldn't have any other ones, okay? The first man and, excuse me, woman had to evolve. Now, people say, oh, they couldn't have made this and that, yada, yada. Look, look, look. How could they populate the planet? Well, technically... Our science tells us that Cro-Magnon man existed on the planet with Neanderthals. Okay? Our science tells us that. Our science also tells us that everyone is related to Neanderthal. It also tells us that we get our immune systems from Neanderthal. And it tells us also that Neanderthal was closely enough related to humans to mate with. Okay? So there's three indications right there that prove... Yes, it's proof, believe it or not. Because those are facts. And when you bring the facts that correlate with the question, then you have the proof. Okay? Somebody doesn't have to do the, the proof right on the spot. We can have the proof and not realize it. Okay? That's completely possible to have all the proof we need, but just not have it in order so we don't recognize it. That's obvious. Okay? So, from everything I've said... I want some, I please, someone help me debunk this. 
Okay, and it needs to be debunked. If you can debunk it, that's cool. Go ahead and do it. I'm waiting. I've been waiting for three years for somebody to debunk this stuff. So please, by all means.